Hello and welcome to another tutorial with Cubase 7. Um, this time we will talk about side chaining using these T2 plugins. So, as you might know, if I open the mixer, when you use a VST2 plugin, there is no sidechain button. But this plugin is able to perform sidechain. Now, the question is how do I set up this plugin in order to get this functionality? And this is what I'm going to show you today. Right. Um, for this purpose, I set up a bass track and drums. And it sounds like this. Wait a moment. Bass is missing. Right. So let's turn this off. So that's the track. Well, extremely complex, but it's, it's serving, it is serving the purpose. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to um, duck the bass with the drum sounds. Okay. So the first thing we have to do, we must build up a group channel. in Quattro configuration. This is necessary because we need actually four inputs for the VST2 plugins. The first and the second input is for the left and for the right side and the third and the fourth input is used as sidechain input. And therefore Quattro is the ideal configuration for building up this. Okay, let's call it Base group. Okay, the ne next thing to do is um, we want to run the base through this compressor. So I'll move it here, switch it on, and route the base to the base group. Now the base is connected with the base group, but the the sidechain isn't connected, so if we listen to the track, we won't hear any sidechaining. Nothing on the sidechain channel. Okay, the se second step is we must use the send channel of the drums in order to send the drums to the sidechain input of this of this plugin. So we will do this now. Here we are. Switch it on. And as you can hear, sidechain is working. And you can also see the uh, compressor is pumping now. If we listen to the sidechain input using monitor. Sorry. So this is the sidechain input and it's working. And what you can see here, we also used a key filter in order to filter only the low frequencies of the bass drum. If I switch off the filter, then you will hear the signal in full spectrum. And then I put on the filter again. Right, that's about it. Very important, before you use the crunchesser, you have to switch the routing to stereo sidechain, otherwise it won't work. Okay, what I'm going to explain now is how exactly the routing is working. Um, for this purpose, I will change the setup in order to visualize what's actually happening here. Uh, I will use a very useful plugin, it's called the Meta plugin, where you can see and also perform routing. So this is the uh, default routing of the base group. And as you can see here, you have got four channels because this is a quattro bus. So we will remove 
these connections now. And add the compressor. And as you can see, the compressor has uh, lots of connectors. And now the question is, which connectors should I use? And if we open the routing of the crunch tesser, then we will see that the first two channels named A and B are routed to left and right. So we will connect this accordingly. And now our bus is connected. Uh, maybe we should set up the plugin. I will just copy these settings. Drive <coughs> attack in order to get the same effect. Sidechain filter and very important. We have to change the routing to stereo sidechain. So you can see the routing here. So now we have the identical settings. Okay, but sidechain is not connected yet, so we will hear no pumping. And if we switch on the listen bus, nothing is going on here. Okay. So now we connect the sidechain inputs. And bam, here we are. Sidechain is working. <coughs> so that's about it how sidechaining works with VST plugins using a Quattro bus. So you could switch off this uh, tutorial now, but if you like more, I will do some more tricks using the capabilities of the Meta plugin. So this is going to be experimental now. I don't know if it works. I disconnect the pins. And what I want to achieve now, I would like to build up um, multiband uh, sidechain ducking. So uh, the idea is to only duck the low frequencies of the bass triggered by the drums. And the first action is we have to split the audio input in, the, in a, a lower frequency part and into a higher frequency part. For this we use the so-called crossover and the crossover gives me um, one, two, three, four stereo pairs, so I can split the input into four frequency bands. I will only use the lower band, ranging from 16 hertz to, say, yeah, it's about 200 hertz, or let's say 250, and we won't use this band. Okay. So th this is meaning uh, uh, 22,000 hertz, hertz, so there is no limitation in the frequency spectrum happening here. Okay, what do we do now? We connect the audio input in the, into the crossover filter. So this is hopefully going to be the lowest frequency band. This will be connected with the um, compressor and connected with the audio input. So the remaining frequencies will be connected without compression. Com compression. So we connect them here and 
here and here. Okay, as you can see, this is going to be a bit complicated now. Um, and what is still to be done, we connect now the other two inputs again with the sidechain input of the compressor. So, this is now a multipan setup, and I'd hope it works as expected. Let's start. Let's put on the listen bus. Well, the compressor is working, but actually not doing what I want, so... Something went wrong. Okay, I'd like to disconnect this now. How does that work? Oh, come on. All ah, right. So let's see if it's better now. Still not working. Huh. Hmm. I think we, we should first try to find out which pins up, um, are connected with which frequencies. Okay, let's remove these ones. Okay, the first two pins. Let's listen to them. What's going on here? Thing. Okay. The second pair. Ah. Ah, this is the low frequency. Mm -hmm. And the third pair. These are the high frequencies and the last pair, nothing. Okay, so then this has to be routed to the compressor and from there to the audio output. Now we can only hear the um, low frequencies. So now let's connect the sidechain in order to make the sidechain compression, compression happen. Yes. Okay. Now you can hear what's happening in the lower part of the spectrum. So now we have got the, the base ducking we wanted to achieve and now let's connect the other frequencies. That's it. That's what we wanted to achieve. So, 
sorry for experimenting a bit, but this um, was the first time I ever used this setting. I can recommend this plugin for these purposes. I hope you learned something and goodbye!